with the stories of the day and the first one up folks alrighty Carson Wentz is undergoing foot surgery yesterday so he's already done he's out of the surgery I'm assuming it went well because I didn't hear that it did not go well you really don't hear that surgery went well unless it didn't go well so Carson Wentz did have surgery yesterday to repair his foot so now you know the timetable of five to 12 weeks and if it's kind of gonna be five weeks then he's gonna be back before week one it's that week before the Thursday night game and uh, they'll be good to go for the Sunday the ninth so Carson Wentz could potentially play every single game and like we said we don't like Carson Wentz being injured but this was kind of a previous injury it's not like this is a new injury this was something that Carson Wentz was really kind of dealing with for a long time but it just finally got to the point where now it requires surgery so we're still kind of decently believing in Carson Wentz if I have to put like a number a percentage to it I'd probably say I'm still 80 out of 100 percentage points buying into Carson Wentz when he can get back healthy now it's just how far can Jacob Eason take this team while Carson Wentz is out for we don't know. Now, the Colts are very, very, very optimistic that Carson Wentz is pretty much going to be fine. Um, they're expecting the first two weeks after the surgery just to be rest. And then that allows kind of three weeks to try to get back into rhythm, back into game playing shape. And the Colts, like I said, have been very optimistic saying that it, this really should not affect him too much he should really be able to kind of get back on the field very very quickly I don't think that they think it's going to take the full 12 weeks it's probably definitely going to take five I don't see him coming back earlier than five weeks but maybe five on the dot maybe six maybe seven but I really don't think this is going to be like the 12 week maximum that they're truly putting on Carson Wentz so expect Carson Wentz maybe to miss the first one two three games but there is still a uh, um, I would probably say 20%. I'll, I'll put a percentage to it. I'll say 20% chance that Carson Wentz is back before week one starts, and that'd be absolutely fantastic. But um, I'm believing in Jacob Eason. Like we said, plug-and-play quarterback. We think the man can do it. He had a full season just to kind of absorb what the NFL is like. He's on the same team, so he's got a little bit of kind of rhythm under his belt on how this team just operates. And you learned under Phillip Rivers for a year, you can definitely take some something away from that so if Jacob Eason does have to kind of come in one two three games we believe they could have a real solid chance to win that game a 50 50 chance to win that game because Jacob Eason could just be the game manager out there now, the big story going on in the media, the national media, social media, and all that is, well, why don't the Colts go out and get another quarterback? And the big name coming around is, why don't they go out and get Nick Foles? Nick Foles' name has been thrown around willy-nilly out here. You can't do that to Carson Wentz again. Do y'all not understand that Carson Wentz was a little fed up with the Eagles because of Nick Foles? Because they praise Nick Foles for taking over Carson Wentz, who got injured the statue, folks. They made a statue of Nick Foles outside of the Eagles Stadium while they were telling Carson Wentz he was their main man. He was their face of the franchise. You can't go out and get Nick Foles. I'm hearing this by everybody. Oh my God, it's such a clear choice. It's such a clear option. This is a no-brainer decision. You go out and get Nick Foles. No, you don't. Why? Why? Nick Foles does not win regular season games, folks. He caught Matt Magic, he caught magic one off season, one postseason run in the Super Bowl, and it's great. I'm not knocking Nick Foles of that, but I am knocking Nick Foles of just last season floundering with the Bears. Mitch Trubisky was putting up more points than Nick Foles was, and Mitch Trubisky is kind of garbage. So what is what are you getting with Nick Foles? You're not getting anything. You don't get solid production offensively with Nick Foles. You just don't. He's not good unless there's kind of some magic in the air, some kind of pressure on him. And if he goes to the Colts, there's no pressure. He's not fighting for a starting job. As soon as Carson Wentz gets back, it's going to be Carson Wentz. Nick Foles would just once again be a backup, and he's not that good of a backup, folks. 
the best backup quarterback in this league is still not that great. Like we said, Ryan Fitzpatrick is probably the best backup in football, and he's only at like a 50, like a 500 record, folks. It's nothing great. He throws a lot of picks, and Nick Foles just does not put up points, folks. If we take a look at what the Bears did last season, uh, let's get it up by this. We can just see, I mean, that's why Matt Nagy started Nick Foles and then had to go back to Mitch Trubisky because the man was not putting up points to win games. So I don't understand why everyone is so in love with Nick Foles again. Why? Why? He doesn't do anything. He doesn't win games. He doesn't even put up points. So let's go into the games this season for the Bears. We could probably pick them out very, very easily here. We're, um, I don't fully know which games Nick Foles played in, but I guess, uh, but I can tell you that we can accurately predict all the games that Nick Foles played in by just looking at the Bears points total. Now, he did come in and win the Atlanta Falcons game. I will say that, but he did throw a pick his first series in. So, um, that's kind of when the change happened. Mitch Trubisky threw an interception against the Falcons, and then they bring in Nick Foles, and he threw an interception, but they rock with him, and uh, Nick Foles did end up winning that game. So, I will give credit for Nick Foles for winning that Falcons game. Alright, but then, I'm going to guess that he played against this Colts team because because they only put up 11 points. They put up 11 points. Let's see if Nick Foles was the starter here. And there he is. Nick Foles. Bingo, bango was the starter of that 11-point game. All righty. Let's take uh, the following week against the Bucs. Probably played that one. They scored. They won the game. Congratulations. But they, once again, only put up 20 points. It's nothing that great. And Nick Foles did play that game as well. I'll give him credit for the win there. All right, against the Panthers, 23 points, a solid point total there. I'm sure he played. Let's just quickly take a look. All right, and he did start that game. All righty, he still had a pick in that game and didn't even throw for 200 yards. So, yeah, they put up 23 points, but it's really not a Nick Foles. Um, all right, I'm going to say that he played against the Rams where he only scored 10 points. Let's take a look. Yes, he did. There he is. Zero touchdowns and two interceptions in a 10-point performance. Nick Foles is so good, folks. Isn't he so gosh dang good? Oh, my goodness. All right, let's keep going here. The 23-point overtime loss. I'm sure he played in this game as well. 23 points. Once again, nothing great. Just kind of average-ish. And Nick Foles did play. Two touchdowns, one pick. Unfortunate they lose in overtime. All right, they put up 17 points against the Titans. Oh, let me guess. Nick Foles played in this game. 17 little old points. And that's, there he is, Nick Foles. He had a pretty decent game, 335 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. But still, once again, not translating to any points. 17 points is really not going to win a game in the NFL. If you're not scoring more than 23, 24 points, 24 to 30 points, you're pretty much not going to win that game. That's just kind of how point totals come out in NFL games. If you're not putting up 24 to 30 don't expect to win the game. All right, here we go. The 20, uh, they put up 13 points against the Vikings. Against the Vikings, the worst defense in the league last season, and you put up 13 points? Come on, Nick Foles. Zero touchdowns, one interception, 106 yards total? What? What? I mean, this is what y'all want to have on this Colts team? And then we're back at 25 points. And I want to say, this is Mitch Trubisky back in. I want to say he gets to start again week 12. Let's quickly take a look because this is 25 points. This is a solid point total here. Who was the quarterback? Mitch Trubisky back at quarterback. And let's round out the last point totals for the rest of the season, folks. 30, 36, 33, 41, and then 16, the last game of the season. A little flounder game, unfortunate. So... Just Nick Foles does not put up the points. He's getting beat out by Mitch Trubisky in points, but just overall it still doesn't really matter. The Bears still don't win the games most of the time, but it's just that Nick Foles does not give you the best shot to win in this league. So you don't really get anything meaningful in the win department. You don't get anything motivating Carson Wentz. He's actually going to probably resent you if you do this. So this is a lose-lose scenario if Nick Foles joins the Colts for a meaningless, what, a couple of games? Four or five games, and then he has to come in and learn the playbook and learn with these receivers? No, just stick with Jacob Eason. He, I think the man can get it done. Just be the game manager. You don't have to burn down this year, this season, because Carson Wentz got a little tweaked up, just a little bit, 
with a pre-existing injury. Everyone take a deep breath. This team is built to win. Quarterback doesn't really matter. You just need somebody that can accurately deliver the ball and be that game manager. So stick with Jacob Eason. Just stick with Jacob Eason. That's really the only the only kind of logical decision. Nick Foles brings you nothing, but it just brings the overall team chemistry way, way, way down. The man is not good, folks. He caught magic in the playoffs. Some people do that. That happens. Eli Manning beat Tom Brady twice on some miraculous throws. Is Eli Manning better than Tom Brady? No. Is Nick Foles better than any other quarterback in this league? No. He just won a Super Bowl by catching magic it happens folks it happens in this league but we've seen it time and time again what is Nick Foles starting record let's see what that is let me get Nick Foles overall record because I'm sure it's it's way way more losses than it is wins I think by a wide margin so here we go he is 28 and 27 career 500 quarterback folks backup at best and he's still not even that great as a backup I mean the man just cannot get it done folks he's not a winner that's all there is to it Career 62% completion percentage. Absolutely very, very not good, folks. So, I don't want to give Nick Foles this job. I don't want... I don't understand why everybody is really kind of saying this is like the biggest uh, no-brainer decision in the offseason. I'm not buying any of it. And let's just talk about Nick Foles trying to get back to the Colts. He's trying. Um, we, we can go in this article. I believe they're going to post some quotes here of Nick Foles because he's praising Frank Reich to have history together all of this I just don't think it's a great decision I don't even think it's a good decision for the Colts in general and Carson Wentz will take big offense to this Nick Carson Wentz wants to get as far away from Nick Foles as he can because Nick Foles overshadows Carson Wentz and Carson Wentz just wants to be the face somewhere wants to be the guy if you tell Carson Wentz he's the guy you better mean it because he just spent you know four seasons in Philadelphia one them with them telling him he's the guy but doing everything in their power to kind of their action speaking that he's not the guy they get rid of him they they draft a quarterback replacement. They have a stadium. They have a statue of Nick Foles outside their home stadium. So none of that screams Carson Wentz is the guy. And we all saw how that resulted for this uh, for the Eagles and Carson Wentz just in general. So let's uh, get uh, some of these quotes up here that Nick Foles is saying here because he's the one that's kind of starting all this kind of talk about getting traded to the Colts and the Colts going out and actively getting this man on the roster. So this is uh, what we got, some quotes here. Colts coach Frank Reich was the Eagles offensive coordinator at the time of the Super Bowl, so the fit is obvious enough. Foles made it clear he wants to have involvement in his destination if he is to be traded and spoke highly of Frank Reich, says, quote, Listen, Frank Reich is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, coaches of all time. He understands me as a player. He understands me as a person. But you know, I haven't had any talks with them. I'm a Chicago Bear right now, but he knows me. He understands. All right, then we get this other quote. Foles is less than four years removed from winning Super Bowl MVP, but his career since then hasn't had the same good fortune. He struggled for the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2019 and against and again last year in seven starts for the Bears. If he's on the move again, he wants familiarity. He says, quote, in this league, I don't want to go somewhere that I don't know. I don't want to listen. Great coaches, when you have a great coaching staff, it's something special. A big reason why we were great in Philly was we had a great coaching staff. So once again, just him catching magic him having Doug Peterson him having Frank Reich just a great coaching staff overall was the reason why they were able to win the Super Bowl it's not like Nick Foles was throwing absolute dimes every single throw every single pass he had the Philly special a trick play that is kind of thought of by the offensive coordinator and the head coach Nick Foles did not come up with that play he executed it to perfection so we'll give him credit but still at the end of the day it was a team collaboration 
collaborative collaborative effort, and it's truly not Nick Foles by himself, a la as we've been seeing the last two seasons with the Jags in 2019 when he was the starter, not getting it done, and then he goes to the Bears and still doesn't get it done when you just have to back up Mitch Trubisky and you still can't even beat out Mitch Trubisky for a starting job. It's like, what are we doing, folks? Truly. So a big reason we were great in Philly was we had a great coaching staff. They put us in a position to succeed, and it showed. Everyone can say it showed. That being said, I don't want to just go somewhere where I don't know them. I don't know the offense. I've gone down that road, and it's not fun. So I don't think this is the right decision, even very, very close. This is the absolute wrong decision to make. Nick Foles would just ruin the locker room. It would make Carson Wentz a little upset. That this man is once again overshadowing. I mean, you could just imagine the stories being written right now just in case this thing does happen. I mean, everyone's just going to be making a mockery of Carson Wentz. And once again, that's not what he wants, folks. He, he was upset there was, there was a mockery with the Eagles last year. With him having all those interceptions and him not being the man and them not committing to him. The man wants some stability. The man wants to be praised as a franchise guy. And I can't blame him when everyone's telling you, hey, you're our guy. You're the guy. Don't don't listen to anything else. Don't worry about Nick Foles getting Super Bowl MVP. Don't worry about us kind of, you know, still having Nick Foles on the team this year. Don't worry about Nick Foles' statue outside the home stadium. You're our guy. Carson Wentz, too, has, was just fed up last year with the Eagles, was pushed past his breaking point and if you bring in Nick Foles I think it's just going to leave a real real bad taste in his mouth and then we get careless Carson Wentz and careless Carson Wentz throws the most interceptions in the league as he did last season so don't go out in Nick Foles please ride with Jacob Eason just practice with the man he's basically got an entire training camp to get ready and get prepared and he's got great players all around him offensively defensively um, coaching staff wise all over the place on the offensive side of the ball two great wide receivers three great running backs it's like you don't need you know Tom Brady to go out and win the Super Bowl for this Colts team so don't get Nick Foles that's the message don't get Nick Foles it makes no sense to you. everyone is trying to trying to make it seem like it's such an obvious choice to do it, but it's it's really not, folks. It's 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 a hundred percent the wrong decision. I've got no problem living and dying by that take. This is the wrong decision to even think about bringing Nick Foles to this Colts team. 